Welcome back, welcome back. This is going to be P3, and P3 needs us to produce plans for a cloud storage and collaboration solution to meet clients' needs. So this is the criteria here. This was copied directly from the assignment brief. And now I do have to say this is going to be one of the longer sections simply because it needs us to do so many things. I copied this from the assignment brief because what they give us as the thing we need to do for P3 isn't detailed enough. So these are the actual things that we have to do for P3. So let me just quickly run through this again. So we need to produce a plan for a cloud-based collaboration solution to meet clients' needs, including an explanation of the requirements and technical specifications. So we're going to have to list the requirements. So what does the client actually need from us? That That's the requirements, what they need to be able to do. The technical specification, that's going to be how we as the technical people intend to make that happen. How do we think or what method do we think is the best way to make that happen? Technical specification for the suggested solution. Review your plan with others. So this is going to be like getting um, comments from people and asking them what do they think about this. They give a few comments and you act based on those comments. To improve the quality, effectiveness, and appropriateness of your plan. So quite a wordy thing, quite a wordy section, but let's jump into it. So, so it says, what does the client need? Have a look at the assignment brief and the specification. So this, I believe, direct, came directly from the assignment brief. The specification has some information there as well. So what I would suggest you do first is define requirements with reference, because that's one of the things that we're going to need to be able to give a requirements list and also define the term technical specification. Define both of these, reference them. You have, you guys know how to reference at this point, hopefully. So the requirements, I copied this and I did a bullet pointed list because it was very, very easy to follow. And the requirements that they need, the things that they require, the things that they need are a cloud-based collaboration solution. And this solution, and this solution needs to be able to do these things here. So the first one says five people must be able to work on it at the same time. It doesn't necessarily mean five people need to be able to work on the same document at the same time, but that is an added feature that I think just makes sense. They should be able to do word processing, so some form of Microsoft Word documents. They should be able to do spreadsheets as well. They should be able to share calendars. Um, they should be able to access this system using at least two web browsers. And they should also be able to access it using a mobile phone operating system. So this could be Android or iOS. There's not, there's not really anything else out there at the moment. And security, this is simply implied. This is not something that they said. This is not a requirement of them. But because it's a company, they're going to be doing things online. They're probably going to have details of people. Security is implied. We should just add some security features in. So that's what I have for requirements section. Now, you can turn this into sentences if you want. I didn't because I wanted to make it as short and, as, and do it as quickly as possible. But you should probably go ahead and turn these into sentences. Then after that, we have possible options. Now, we will be doing a technical requirements section below this. But the possible options I came up with based on the requirements, Google Drive and Microsoft uh, 365. There are other options. I believe Dropbox now offers an option to edit documents and spreadsheets and so on. But because I know that Google Drive has literally everything on this list, and so does Microsoft Office 365, I, st I stuck with them. Um, they both offer a free plan, and the free plan is very, very, very good. They're very comprehensive. You can send emails, you can do calendars, you can um, share folders and files and do all those things, so it's, it's very good. Pause the video and look at all the features I've said on the left here, and everything I've said on the left here is simply from the requirement. So if I scroll back up slightly to this section here, you'll see these are the requirements here, and these are more or less the same things that I've put in here so that I can go ahead and say, well, maximum people for collaborating, Google Drive gives you 100 people can work on a document at the same time. Office 365, there's no limit, but obviously things will slow down based on the amount of people working on it at the same time. Word processing, yes, it uses Google Docs, but you can download this as a PDF or as a Word document or whatever you want. Microsoft Office obviously does the same thing. So I would create something like this. And it, again, it does not have to be Google Drive or Office 365. It could be whatever options you deem better, but they must be able to do the bare minimum, the things on your requirements list. And your requirements list might be slightly different from mine. You might not need to look at security. I did it just because it's something that's implied. We should always have security in place. And you might word these differently, but it doesn't matter. Next, we have technical specification. And what does that mean? It means simply to specify or say what is going to be done. That's what that says there. Then say why it is going to be done. This is going to be the justification. Now, there is another criteria that needs us to justify. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to use P3 
to say what and say why at the same time, just because it's probably easier to write that way. So the first thing I have on my list here is collaborative working, five people or more. This is the very first requirement from the list of requirements. This is the very first thing that I'm going to speak on. So let me scroll back up and show you what I mean. So this is my list of requirements again. And the very first thing on this list is that one there. And when I scroll back down to my technical specification, that's the first thing I have. That's the first thing I'm going to speak on. I'm going to say what I'm going to do and then why I'm going to do it. So my justification is here. So the first thing I have is two admin accounts will be created, which are different from the working accounts. Let me try and give some context if possible. So the two admin accounts are going to be people who are not a part of that five people team. So imagine we have person A, B, C, D, E, F, right? Five people, person one, two, three, four, five. We need two separate admin accounts who are the people who are going to be managing the working people. So it could be a manager or a supervisor or an IT person. It doesn't really matter. And the reason, well, I'll go back to the reason later on. We have two-factor authentication will be enabled on all the accounts. So for you to be able to log in on a new device or a new PC or just log in on a day-to-day -day basis, you're going to have to put your email address in your password and it's going to also maybe send you a text message to a mobile phone that you've added to give you a specific code that you need to log in. So that's the security part there. Five worker accounts will be created. So that's, how I'm, that's what I'm going to do. A shared folder will be created on the chosen platform. So again, it could be Google Drive um, or it could be Microsoft Office 365 OneDrive. All seven people will be added to the folder. They will all have edit rights. So every single person added. So the five workers, person one, two, three, four, five, plus the two admin accounts, they can all edit stuff. However, the admin accounts can do more. So under here, I've got justification as well. This is how I would do it. There's no right or wrong way to do this. Once you can um, specify, so say what, and then once you can justify, say why. So specifying is what or how, and then the... The justification is going to say, why have you done it this way? So now I'm going to explain everything. So I'm saying the admin accounts will be will enable account recoveries to take place. If someone forgets their password, they forget something they need to delete or recover something. This is these admin accounts are going to help with that. So we don't give the five people working on it too many privileges. They only need to be able to edit Word documents, send calendar invites, edit spreadsheets and do a, a few more things. So we give the admin accounts more access. The shared folder will allow for collaborative working. So when we share the folder, we share it with those five or seven people. So let's say I am the admin doing everything. So I'm one of the admins. I would share it with another admin and give that admin complete control over everything just like myself. But the other, the other five people, so person one, two, three, four, five, what I would do for them is I would give them basic edit rights, documents, calendars, so on and so forth. Two-factor authentication to limit the risk of hacking or hacks or data being leaked or lost or stolen. So two-factor authentication. When you log in, it sends you a, a separate code. And then only the admin accounts can delete other accounts. So we will not give the person one, two, three, four, five, all those five people, access to delete other people's accounts. Only the two admin accounts will be able to do that. And only the admin accounts will be able to delete files. So there's a thing in Microsoft 365 I don't know about Google because I've never really done the admin section of that. It's called two-factor authentication delete. And what that will do, it will, when you try to delete something, you have to put your password in and then it's going to send you a code to your mobile phone. And then you have to put the code in as well to ensure that the thing you're trying to delete, you definitely, definitely want to delete it. So this is complete and utter overkill. But I wanted to make this one as detailed as possible because I'm only going to be doing one example here. You guys should go through and do for every single bullet point here. So word processing collaboratively, how will this be done? And then why will it be done? Spreadsheets, how will this be done? And why will it be done? Let me quickly go through maybe how you could do the Word document and spreadsheet one. Google Drive and Microsoft Office 365 both have built-in word processors, both have built-in spreadsheet programs, and both of them allow you to share a link or share the file so people can work on it at the same time. That's what I would do there. Why is this being done? Because this is simply a requirement of the company. They need word processing. Also, the word processing for both of them, you can download in very popular formats. For example, when you do the word processing thing, you can download as a PDF, you can download as a normal Word document, you can download as whatever other format the client might want. But the two main ones are going to be PDF and Word document. And I would say more PDF because after you create documentation like they're going to be creating, you normally don't want to have the client edit it. You simply send them a PDF, they can read it, print it and do whatever they want. 
So that's how I would do this. So pause the video here, go back, look at this section again. And this is something that you want to do for each one. Say what is going to be done. It doesn't have to be super detailed. Simply say what is going to be done. And then after you've said what, you justify why is it going to be done. And this will cover another criteria as well. Just as a quick note, the criteria that the justification will cover is actually M2, where it says justify planning and implementation decisions. Once you've done P3 the way I suggested it, it will also cover M2. Just as a quick recap, everything that needs to be in the technical specification comes from the requirements. So go over the requirements again, and the requirements are a cloud-based collaboration solution. Five people need to be able to work on it. It needs to be able to do word processing. It needs to be able to do spreadsheets. It needs to be able to share calendar invites. You need to be able to access it using two browsers on the desktop. You need to be able to access it using a mobile phone OS, either via a browser, but preferably by an app. So an application on Android or iOS and security needs to be something in place as well. So these are all the things that you need to have in your technical specification. Before we go any further, we're still on P3. We need to get comments on the plan. So after you've done all the sections I've shown you before, you need to get user feedback and comments. So the people who are gonna be using the system, obviously you can use, use your classmates as well. I wouldn't recommend putting their names in. Simply say user zero one feedback and comments and have them say something about the plan. Maybe they don't like Google Drive. Maybe the company's already a Microsoft company. They have Microsoft emails. So maybe using Microsoft OneDrive might make more sense. If they are a Google company, using Microsoft OneDrive might not make sense. Whatever comments you think are relevant, whatever comments they think are relevant, let them add them here. And once they add them here, you can either choose to action them or choose to not action them. I would choose to action a couple of them. So don't make your plan perfect the very very first time leave a few holes in there where people can poke a few holes and say hmm, maybe you should do that maybe you should add security so maybe actually leave security off for the very first implementation of this and then someone can come and say in quotes um oh maybe you should add a method for people to access the system securely because if anyone can grab the computer log in and edit stuff that might not be a great idea after you've gotten the user feedback so i've left this blank because you could just have your friends make some stuff up have your teacher make some stuff up you can make some stuff up that you think needs to be improved next we have a feedback review section so this is going to be a pool of comments from all the people you had up here so i only did three people you can do as many as you want i wouldn't recommend more than about five five to seven because i'm i mean the requirement said you needed roughly five people so those five people in quotes could be the people that give you comments and the extra two people could be the admin people who say oh maybe you should do it this way and that way so maybe five to seven people should be good um, a pool of comments from those people you can do as many as you want as i've mentioned and here i've given an example so user one said this thing positive or negative so user one could say imagine you didn't have security user one could come and say something along the lines of i think the plan is really good however security needs to be implemented because this is a company we're going to have people's details i think there needs to be some level of security I would agree with that one. So I've put here the choice that you are going to make is either to agree with what they've said or disagree with what they've said. For that one, for security, I would 100% agree. And it's so easy to implement. Two-factor authentication, say you're going to do it. Even if you don't do it, once you say you're going to do it, that's fine. Because this is the plan. The plan is something that should be followed. But if it's not followed exactly how you planned it, that's perfectly fine. Because when you come to do your conclusion or your review, you can say, I planned to do the security thing. However, it was so difficult to do on this system. I left it out and I did this, these other things instead. So get all the comments from all the people that you want to get. And you can simply say agree or disagree. Now, if you agree... Down here, this is an extra mini paragraph as well. It could be a couple of sentences. Honestly, if you agree, say why. So let's go back to the security option. So user one says something about security. I would 100% agree with user one on security. It should be implemented. Why? Because we don't want people's details being stolen and that's it. So for every single thing you do, you go through, you agree and disagree. If you disagree with something, you don't need to comment on it again. That's fine. However, if you agree with something, say why? So what I would do, I would copy this. So whatever the user comments are, I would say user one said this, 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 and this. And I agree with adding security because add it somewhere down here underneath this table. It doesn't even have to be a table. Sentences are fine as well. I just like tables because it makes it easier to, to see what's going on. And that's it. I think that's all you need to do for the plan. So P3, even though it's a pass criteria thing, there's so much involved in it because you can't have a plan 
without knowing what you're planning and what you're planning is going to be based on the requirements. So you have to have the requirements first. It's, it's weird, right? You have to have the requirements first. And then after you have the requirements, you have to look at possible options that can give you the thing or give you the end result that you want. So for me, it's going to be Google Drive and OneDrive. And after you have your possible options, then you say, hmm, I'm going to choose, let's say, I really like Office 365 OneDrive because it's, it's gotten really good over the last few years. So I'm going to choose OneDrive because most companies just have Microsoft email. So I'm going to choose OneDrive. And then after choosing the system I want to use, then you look at how am I going to use the system I've chosen to get to the end result. So I, can, I know I can create accounts. I know I can create folders. I know I can create files. I know I can create Word documents, spreadsheets. I know I, I, know I can share calendar invites with Microsoft Calendar or Microsoft Teams. So it does everything I want. So hopefully that was clear enough. But if it's not, please pause the video at different sections and go over it if necessary. And good luck.